Hey guys, happy summer, and I just wanted to do a quick 3D printing video to let you know that I am indeed working on stuff. I haven't posted a lot of stuff recently, but this is what has been occupying a lot of my time as of lately. It is my TiVo Tornado. It was my problem child since the very beginning. I broke the bed not long after having it, and it's kind of sat on the sidelines for the better part of a year. Now I'm in the middle of doing some upgrades to it. My thought and hope is I can make it work better than it was ever intended to work. And well, hang tight and I'll tell you what I've done so far. Hey guys, welcome back. First of all, hello, my name is Paul. This is my channel where I kind of combine all my interests, 3D printing, BB-8 building, R2 building, all into my one channel where nerdy is cool. So if this is your first time here, welcome. If you're a regular visitor, welcome back. So having said that, let me tell you about what I've been working on. So we got this back in the winter of 2018. We were pretty excited about it because it's supposed to be better than the CR10, okay? It's got the AC bed, which is better than the uh, 12 volt bed that the CR10 has. And the other thing was is that, uh, you know, it's a 24 volt system, which is supposed to be, you know, better than the 12 volt because of course the hot end will heat up faster. Okay. So a couple issues I ran into right away was doing test prints. We were seeing issues with the Y axis. So thanks to other YouTubers that have done various videos, we had to increase the voltage uh, to correct that. Okay, one problem solved. And then as I started to do more prints, I noticed I was getting the salmon skin. And then of course the solution to that would be, or one of the potential solutions was to put uh, some of the uh, diodes in line there that was supposed to take care of some of that salmon skin effect, uh, some of that noise out of there. And the other thing that kind of annoyed me with this machine is the minute you turn it on, the, the electronic box is just def, just super loud and kind of a nitpick, but I had other printers show up at that time. I was working on the FT5 uh, and some of the other machines came on board, so I kind of shelved it. Uh, when I got back to it, it was when I was doing some work with the Easy ABL probe. I had put one on the CR10. I thought I'd put one on this. I wanted to put solid spacers on the uh, bed and uh, when I uh, unscrewed the uh, screw uh, from the bed and then tried to uh, put the spacer and then retighten it, the bed shattered. Uh, fortunately, no injuries, but definitely annoying. So uh, then it, that left me trying to figure out how am I going to replace this bed because uh, it, it does not have a metal bed. It, what happens is you have the adhesive pad that goes to the bottom of that surface that shattered and you need to replace that. So all in all, the timing of when I was working on this had interest in it and then other stuff showed up, I just put it aside. But here we are now in 2019. There's a lot of stuff out there that we can do to make this better. There's a lot of people that have made various videos on YouTube how to make the drivers quieter, how to make the electronics box quieter, how to get better quality prints. So it was hard for me to ignore this printer any longer. So I decided, all right, let's invest in a few parts and see what happens. One of the first things we had to address was the bed. The old bed was shattered, can't attach that. So reached out to TH3D and contacted Tim, let him know what was going on and he said, well, I do have a glass bed in stock that would work and there's a way you can attach that using some clips and I got some close-ups here showing you how that goes in and that is a popular topic on various sources like Reddit and others where people have used different kinds of glass or uh, even aftermarket uh, materials uh, to use that as a bed instead. So kudos to that and thank you very much Tim. The next thing we wanted to do is we wanted to replace the board that was inside of there. Uh, we went with an MKS Gen L because what we wanted to do is we wanted to put, you can't replace the drivers on the stock board. And I can't remember what they came with uh, off the top of my head, but we decided I recently bought a bunch of drivers, some uh, 2208s, and thought, well, let's do that. We'll put those in the machine and that will make things very quiet. So we're using 2208s on the X, Y, and Z, and then we're using the LV8729. I think I got that right for the extruder. And what I did is I followed the steps that Rui Raptor has provided step by step on setting the proper voltages, how to plug them in, how to do everything on the board. And that went great. And I have a link down below for Rui Raptor's tutorial. So if you have a TiVo Tornado and you want to make this upgrade, he's laid it all out for you. Fortunately, 
the steppers that I bought or stepper drivers that I bought had all the same uh, resistors that he has. Um, like I said, if you watch this video, he has a lot of uh, great details on how to make this all happen. So the other thing we had to do is we had to print out an adapter so that this MKS Gen L board would fit inside the current control box. And this is where it gets really fun. To manage around these wires uh, that are all attached in there, uh, first of all, you want to definitely take photographs and you definitely want to label all the wires so the things they're attached to so that as you unplug the old board, put the adapter in and plug in the new board, it's pretty much just a matter of plugging things back in. And overall it was. So that went pretty well. Um, the problem is, is that of course you're dealing with things that are hanging out the back of a control box so the ergonomics are a little bit of a challenge. If you have smaller hands or if you have a lot of patience, this may go a lot easier for you. So we mentioned we're in the control box. So one of the things I wanted to do while I was inside of there is I wanted to get rid of all the stock stuff that was potentially problematic. I say that five times fast. So we got rid of the power supply. We replaced it with a Meanwell power supply. We took out the no-name brand SSR that was in there and replaced it with a quality SSR um, based on the information from other builders. So those were replaced as well too. Now the next step that was really challenging is the noisiest part of that control box was the fans. Now the system is a 24 volt system and the fans that are being used inside of here are 50 millimeter and I could not locate any Noctua 50 millimeter uh, 24 volt fans. They only make 12 volt stuff. So I have several converters available so if I could find the right fan, uh, even if it was 12 volt, I could step down that voltage and make it happen. Uh, but I was not able to find any on my first look through. So going through Amazon, I found a few other fans that were purported, <laughs> purported, okay, to be quieter. And uh, what I did is I discovered that because of the size of these fans and because of the way the new board is laid out, uh, currently uh, the stock TiVo Tornado from 2018 has both fans inside the control box. Uh, now with the new configuration, I had to put uh, one of those fans on the outside. And what you're doing is you have, uh, if you're looking frontwards at the box, you have air coming in and then you have air being blown out. So you have a constant flow of air going through, which is very important for these drivers that run hotter, okay? So the first thing I ran into is <laughs> the fans are not quiet at all. Uh, but what's interesting is in doing some of my early testing, uh, when I was moving the uh, axis around uh, on the X, Y, and Z, very quiet, practically silent, which negates all the gains because the fans are now stupid loud. <laughs> so I've made no progress there. Um, then there was one issue that happened immediately was uh, the first thing I noticed is that my uh, uh, hot end on power up was immediately trying to heat up to its highest temperature and I kept having to cut the power. So it turns out that that MKS Gen L board has a faulty MOSFET. So that came from overseas. One of the few times I've done, I've, I've done stuff through Alibaba or whatever they're called and I just said, forget it, I'll, I'll go with, the, with an Amazon or a USA seller and get another MKS Gen L. And uh, again, I reached out to TH3D and got a new board from him, plugged that in, again, dealt with all the fun of dealing with the wires and unplugging everything and plugging things back in. And uh, this board has worked just fine. So as you can see at this point, we have the electronics largely squared away. Uh, I still wanna make changes to the air cooling in the control box, uh, but I'm still searching for the proper fan uh, that will fit the control box uh, hole pattern. You know, I know I can go bigger, I know I can go smaller, I know I can buy adapters, uh, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out what can I buy off the shelf uh, without going too crazy here. Noctua fans would be great because they're silent, so still working on that aspect of it. So you may be wondering, okay, so you're doing all this work, what are you gonna be using for the hot end extruder and et cetera, things like that. So the goal is what I wanna do is I wanna use a BMG, a Bontech a BMG extruder, and we're using a brand name Bontech BMG. Uh, I researched, I read a lot of things about various uh, BMG clones, and 
Um, I've seen where someone's had good luck with Triangle Labs, and I've seen where five others did not have any luck with. So this is one of those ones where I'm not big into purchasing clones. I Yes, I know it's crazy. I'll pay a little bit more money, but I'd rather that if it's E3D, uh, if it's Bontech or others, I don't mind paying more if I'm getting genuine stuff. And if my purchase is helping sponsor their creativity for new products, I'm okay with that. So it's going to be a genuine Bontech extruder. It's going to be a genuine E3D V6. And uh, I, I found a file on uh, Thingiverse. It's, uh, uh, it's called the tank. As a matter of fact, uh, Bontech offers this as a SLA um, a printed uh, upgrade kit. It costs like 250 some odd bucks or more. So uh, it's much cheaper just to buy the Bontech, buy the genuine E3D V6 and print out these parts uh, and use this. But what's really cool is Bontech on their website says this was inspired based on the tank. Uh, and then, you know, it's easy enough to find, you know, the tank, you know, on Thingiverse. So it's, it's nice that Bontech is giving them kudos for inspiring them to make their own version of what this gentleman has made. And that's where I'm at right now. So as you can see, I've just started to get the, uh, the hot end apart. Uh, I've got the, uh, the cover and the hot end needs to come off. The extruder needs to come off. I'm going to reuse the existing stepper motor that is on the extruder. Uh, why not? I, I haven't had any issues with it so far. Uh, part of me wanted to put an E3D uh, or a pancake or a lighter uh, motor on there, but for right now, um, I've spent uh, enough money on other things. Uh, I have a BL Touch, so that's going to be part of this install as well too. So essentially, the only thing I haven't uh, changed on this, which is still a possibility, is uh, uh, I could certainly put a second Z uh, uh, lead screw on the other side because currently this only has one. So that has gone through my mind. I know there's a few ways where people have been doing these kind of upgrades, either with adding a second stepper motor lead screw, you know, that whole bit. Uh, or I've seen some other upgrades where essentially um, it bolts in and it doesn't have a stepper motor, but it comes out the top and it comes out to a gear and there's a belt that goes across these guys. So that's also a possibility. But I think first and foremost, I'm just gonna go with a single lead screw and uh, just see what that gives me. And my hope is that after all this investment, uh, this thing will finally give me the good quality prints that, for example, my CR10 and CR10S has. One of the other things I thought about doing, because it's so big right now, but I've already invested in the MKS Gen L, it's already installed, the driver's already tuned and set to go is I thought about going with SKR 1.3 because that is currently the Rage, Marlin 2.0 and everything else. But I think for right now, I think what I have is, is gonna work just fine. Uh, I've already invested enough money on everything that's in here. So some of you are probably gonna hit me in the comments section going, just go SKR, just go this, go with sensorless homing, etc., etc. Of course, there's a lot of ways you can, you can change this uh, configuration. Everything's open source, that's great. But I think for right now, I'm gonna stick to the Marlin 1.1.9, or I, I could go Marlin 2.0 uh, on this board, but I think one thing at a time. All right, so that's where I'm at with the TiVo Tornado Upgrade Project. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. And just a side note, every now and then, this doesn't happen very often, there's always that one or two idiots that post all kinds of hateful comments in the comment section down below. And I don't know why they do it, it's just moronic. So if you're gonna comment, please keep it on topic and let's keep the personal attacks and insults to a minimal, okay? Uh, let's, let's be nice to each other, all right? So that said, um, that's where I'm at with this one. If you wanna follow or see what else is going on, please follow my social media. I am on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, and of course the website, we're nerdiestcool.com. And if you are not already following me or liking me on those particular social media outlets, feel free to do so. It'd be fun to hear from you. So thanks for watching, and well, I'm gonna get back to work on this. So have a good one, and remember, this is where nerdy is cool. Stay nerdy, guys.